It's a radical idea. God's people should work for the good of those who are not living in a right relationship to God. That, however, is exactly what he told the Israelites. And it's in accord with what Jesus said was the second greatest commandment, love your neighbor as yourself. And it certainly fits in with John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave. Throughout the Bible, repeatedly, we see God's concern for cities and the people within them, both for those inhabited by his people like Jerusalem and those that were not, such as Nineveh or Babylon. So if God is just as concerned about cities now as he was then, we should be concerned too. Genesis begins, in the beginning, God. And I always pause there because the first few words of Genesis inform us that we are entering into God's story. God is the hero. This is not our story. Yes, we are invited to be part of it, but this is primarily the story of God. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. As this chapter unfolds, we get a glimpse of God in creation, hanging the stars in the sky and hovering over the sea. As a holy and divine artist, God paints our world beautiful with the most loving attention to detail. God's love is displayed throughout creation. But Daniel created that atmosphere when he threw open his windows towards Jerusalem, reminding himself of the person to whom he was praying and his longing for home that one day he would go to his heavenly home. For you and me, for myself, I want to throw open the windows of my heart towards home also. And when I pray, know that this life is not all there is. I'm going home and I want my life to be in step with what eternal values would dictate. Uh, I, I want to remember that I'm just a pilgrim passing through. It's because you've taught me that every great thing that ever happened, any significant thing that ever happened in Jesus' life, happened during one of the Jewish festivals. That's right. And we as Christians don't even know what those festivals are. Explain that to me, please. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's seven festivals in Leviticus 23. He, at his first coming, he dies as the Passover lamb. He raises from the dead. His resurrection is on a Jewish holiday of the first fruits. fruits. And he pours out his spirit on? On um, Pentecost. On Pentecost in Hebrew, Shavuot, the same day the Ten Commandments are given is the same day that the Holy Spirit is poured out at Mount Sinai. So it makes sense that if every event in his life revolves around the Jewish holidays, he even goes up to celebrate Hanukkah, John chapter 10, it would make sense that he's born on the Feast of Tabernacles, which celebrates- Would be September. In September, in the fall, which makes sense that he is tabernacling among us and the word became flesh. What we want is peace. What we want is freedom. What we want is to have the simpler life we crave that has thus far eluded us and not from lack of effort. So hey, do something with me, will you? Just breathe. This isn't gonna be a list of to-dos or a hefty spiritual undertaking you're not properly equipped for. What it's gonna be is a six session journey to help you see the truth about the hidden snares of a life complicated by doing things our way and the beauty and freedom of putting Jesus in his number one spot.